Hello and welcome to this space. I am absolutely thrilled that you found your way here today and that you chose to spend some time with me in order to find out how to keep your horses fit and healthy physically, mentally and emotionally. To start off, let me just tell you a little bit about my story because I think this is crucial to why I'm doing this the way that I am. Ever since I was a little girl, I was absolutely obsessed with horses. They fascinated me to an extent that I couldn't, well, back then, not yet understand. And I was so intrigued by the way humans worked with horses that I wanted to work with them myself. So I chose to do so. From the early age of 11, I was sharing horses and I continued to learn from some really talented horse trainers and owners with some really amazing horses. They taught me so much, but eventually there was a point where they couldn't teach me anymore and I had to look further in order to gain more insight and more depth in this. So in 2009, I moved to Cambridge in the UK and started a new chapter by studying equine science after my gap year in there as well. This course offered me the opportunity to dive really deep into the knowledge around horses and it fed my natural ability to see if a horse was unsound and it empowered me to share my knowledge with other people, much like I am doing with you right now today. During my degree, I absolutely loved equine biomechanics, equine physiology, equine training, therapy and rehabilitation, equine husbandry, and so many more of the interesting subjects. Finally, I had found my niche. In 2013, I successfully completed my BSc in equine studies in Cambridge in the UK. In 2014, I also certified as an ESMT, that's an equine sports and rehabilitation massage therapist via Equisage Europe, which offered me further guidance and insight into where my true strength lied and how I could help this in order to keep horses fitter, healthier and train them more sustainably. In 2016, I gained my MSc in Equine Science through Edinburgh University and I also work with the Animal Health Trust in Newmarket as a temporary research assistant on various studies during my degrees, after which I moved back to Germany. I have specialised in equine welfare, in equine therapy and rehab, equine biomechanics, equitation science and equine husbandry. I wanted to learn everything I possibly could in order to help you as much as myself and ultimately my horses to live the life that they truly deserve. Whilst working as a consultant on various projects in said fields, I learned that equine science is the foundation of our knowledge, but it cannot account for everything. The practical implementation actually starts with you as the owner, the friend, the trainer, the keeper, whatever you are. Therefore, I also aim to help you with your personal development and creating a mindful, lasting and force-free horse-human connection. Soundness to me is not just a word to describe a horse. It is a way of living and interacting because there was a moment that this became really crucial for me. When my mare son came to live in the UK with me, she was at first kept in a single paddock with some other horses over the fence. But pretty soon I realized that she became depressed and everything turned into either a battle or a complete freak out. Sun was wilting away in front of my eyes, so something had to change, pretty much right now. I soon found a little Exmo pony named B, which was looking for a new home on loan. We went to see her and she seemed perfect, so B moved in. At that stage, I had my own little DIY paddock trail. B was perfect for Sun. They never fought and they instantly connected. There was something between them. Sun was happy and so was I. But not long after Bee's arrival, everything changed again, this time for me. The horses were best of friends, but all of a sudden I could no longer touch Bee. She showed me more than once that people had not best treated her in her past life. And everything that I did sent her into a fight, flight, freeze or fawn mode. She showed a strong dislike for the farrier, for the vets, enclosed spaces, saddles, even just observing them and so much more. Everything turned into an attack. I was even unable to put on a head collar for about six months. Every form of pressure led to her bolting, rearing, biting or kicking. B encouraged me to question everything, completely rethink everything. And I learned that everything I believed about horses to this point wasn't right. I had to question methods, beliefs, but this was when I knew I had to become the change myself. And so with the help of my two girls, my journey to holistic horsemanship started. 
Science for Soundness was born out of the idea to share this journey, help other like-minded horse owners establish a true connection with their horses and encourage their horses to feel and do better in themselves as well. Horsemanship is not about dominating another living being, it is about mutual dialogue founded on trust and understanding for one another. Once you've entered this magic space, you'll never want to go back. I now live with my horses surrounding my house in their paddock paradise, spending time with them whilst I'm actually outside working the land or gardening, observing them with a cup of coffee in my hand whilst I'm on my break, actually training with them, but also whilst I'm sitting in my office being able to look out of the window and see them sharing such a strong bond as a herd. I can honestly say that my perception of equine training, equine husbandry, equine biomechanics and everything around horses has changed so, so much. So I have continued to work with people either online or offline to better their perception and have the best possible horse-human connection whilst also allowing themselves to have the best possible training outcomes with their horses. These past years have given me more time and more detailed insight into what it truly means to keep your horse fit and healthy, physically, mentally, and often forgotten, but super, super important, emotionally. Because there's one thing that people often forget. Everything is connected. So with everything being connected, Let's just dive straight into it with why you're here today. I think we can all agree that you love your horse. You want to do what's best for your horse, but you still want to have that goal in mind of where you could possibly be. Little disclaimer at this point, that goal looks different for everyone. So I cannot possibly put you in one of those drawers, like I say, without having a proper one-on-one -on -one chat with you. So just bear that in mind, if this doesn't fit you 100%, feel free to book a consultation call with me for free and we can talk through your individual situation. But for now, let's just stick with what I truly know. You love your horse. You want the best for your horse. You want to achieve something with your horse without actually hurting him or her. You want to have a good time with your horse without actually jeopardizing health and welfare, but also training output. And often it seems kind of hard to combine all of those and more with many of the standard practices that are being taught to this day. Most equine trainers are pretty traditional and most equine trainers don't have a scientific background. So naturally, in many ways, the standard horse trainer will just stick with what they know works best. That may work for a lot of horses, but maybe you don't feel quite comfortable with that. Maybe you don't feel that that's right. And maybe you know there must be a better way because it doesn't work for your horse. Either because there's too much force or because your horse is showing clear signs or signals of resistance like bucking, rearing, leaning on the bit or rushing forward, spooking and many, many more. I bet that you don't want force to be in your horse human connection. I bet that you actually want to achieve lightness and ease in balance with your horse during exercise and daily interaction. But maybe this just hasn't really occurred yet because you haven't had the guidance at hand that you would have needed in order to achieve this. If there is anything I want you to take away from this video today, I want it to be the fact that you have everything you need inside of you in order to have a good time and succeed with your horse. Continue to question everything and you will succeed. Listen to your horse and you will succeed. But for now, chances are you are here because you've had a feeling that your horse could improve either on fitness or health whether it is physically, mentally, or emotionally. So let's look at reasons why your horse may not be fit or healthy and what fit and healthy may actually look like. First of all, here are a few potential indications for an unfit or unhealthy horse. To this, I count a loss of condition, which can be a different feel during training. So when you're sitting on your horse, it feels different a visible loss of muscle condition, a start of problematic behaviors such as rearing, bucking or issues whilst tacking up, problems to pick up the correct lead in canter or keep it, problems holding their feet for the farrier, being buddy sour and unable to leave the companion without actual serious distress, 
They were all obvious signs that I've just mentioned, but there are also more subtle ones too. So such as walking away upon sight of either the tack, the head collar, your car, or even you. Visibly dissociative behaviors, such as standing in the corner of a box with a lethargic look on their face, spending time alone in the pasture, not joining in with the herd, freeze behavior during training situations, and many more. Now, I want you to remember that these can be highly individual and therefore are very, very different for each and every horse. No one knows your horse as best as you do. So it is your job to question certain behaviors or listen to your gut instinct or intuition as soon as you have a feeling that something isn't right or is quite a little bit off. If something doesn't work out, I think you and I can agree that force is never the answer. If you want to have a mutual respectful relationship with your horse, but I know how difficult it can be to get a different perspective and follow that intuition with your horse. So how about we look at some actual footage of horses in certain situations and discuss how we could have helped them be fitter, healthier and work with them in a way that actually supports this physically, mentally and emotionally. Are you on board? Good? I'm glad because this is actual footage of my own journey with my own horses. Because it would be too easy to criticize or question somebody else's interactions, I want you to understand that I'm able to look at my own interactions with my horses and try and reassess them with the emphasis on actually becoming better each time. This is not about beating myself up for doing something a certain way. It's more about empowering myself to move along on this path to more lightness and balance with my horses because I know this will ultimately keep them fitter and healthier in every way, on every level. So let's start off with a little buck. <laughs> in this video, you see me riding my four-year-old gelding, Rubio. I don't ride him regularly, and this was actually the second time I sat on him. However, his previous owner rode him regularly, and so I knew that he was able to perform walk, trot, and canter without any issue. That day, however, he threw a little buck. But see for yourself. You can see me transition into trot. We are riding bitless and Rubio is finding it hard to keep a steady pace. And something's up with his head. His head carriage is kind of off. As I ask for canter, he throws a buck. As I ask again, he does a canter. However, what you don't see in this video is that he's actually bucking. At the end of the session, when I was about to feed him, he revealed what was the underlying issue. He was actually lame. I couldn't see him being lame during his normal interaction in the pasture with the other horses, otherwise I would have never tacked him up nor ridden him. He also didn't show up lame in a walk or trot when I was riding. The only thing that was obvious to me is that there was some sort of resistance in his body. The resistance presented itself by means of an unsteady pace, tension in his neck and a really unsteady head carriage. He didn't pull, he didn't run off underneath me and he didn't do anything nasty either. He just said, I can't. And it would have been my job to listen to him when he showed the first little signs of bucking. Now, like I said, I'm not here to either bash myself or judge anybody else. All I'm trying to do is give you a sense of perspective, what fit and healthy may look like and what it may not look like. To many people, this ride actually would have looked really nice. Others may have found lots of faults in it, but the truth of the matter is that I know my horse best out of all of these people. And next time I know better than to continue riding, even if it's only for a further half a circle. So it's not about making a mistake, but more about what can I take away from it for my horse. As you can probably tell, after this, I was curious. I started a little investigation and tried to find out why he was actually lame on that day, as there were no obvious signs of any issues. He even trotted towards me when he saw me with the head collar. So let's move on to something a little more subtle. I had my friend film me for this because I wanted to see if Rubio was visibly lame on the lunge. There are many ways why horses can be unsound. Seeing as I am an equine therapist, it is absolutely okay to assess for myself before I consult a vet on certain aspects. Would he have persisted to be lame or showed any signs of pain during his everyday interaction in the herd, then I would have of course consulted a vet. Obviously, only ever go as far as you can judge this. Consult an equine specialist or vet as soon as you're out of your comfort zone in the, for the sake of your horse. 
In this case, Rubio's lameness was very short-lived and you can see him on the lunch here in a walk without problems. If I was to point out anything during his walk, it would be the matter that I'm nagging him too much with the whip and creating too much pressure. However, in this case, I was aware of the fact that I needed him to stride forward and show his full locomotion for the actual camera assessment. Can you see how he's really, really struggling to pick up the right lead canter? Just like he did under saddle, this is the reason why I'm actually asking him to slow down and pick it back up again, in order to try and pick up the right lead. Rubio is clearly struggling with this, and to me, speaking as an equine therapist, it looks as though the issue is on his left hind, which is not striding through as smoothly as it could. His overall fitness is pretty good, despite the fact that he is clearly experiencing some physical problems. He's a very happy boy with a positive attitude. So here's something super, super subtle. Do you notice how a little bit of his mane is on the right rather than on the left with the rest of his mane? This is something I see in horses that are either extremely asymmetrical, left to right, or have severe tension in the necks. Rubio is hollow on his left, which technically should mean that his entire mane is on the left. As a therapist, I see horses like Rubio with a little bit of mane on the wrong side when they are tense in that area. This in itself is a fascinating subject as there can be so many reasons related to this, which can all be really, really subtle issues. Another really subtle sign for actual stress or discomfort in this next video is where Rubio is chewing and grinding his teeth. This is something he used to do quite frequently when he first came to me and it actually stopped after about two weeks of living in the paddock trail. Chewing, such as he is doing in the video, can be a sign of stress, it can be a sign of pain or discomfort and this can be emotionally, physically or mentally. So you can really see why this is so important to know your horse. Only if you know your horse, you will be able to tell the difference between mental discomfort, physical discomfort or emotional discomfort. This is his reaction when he's under acute mental distress. In this case, however, Rubio was actually showing me that he was in physical pain. But see for yourself. He was trying to find a spot to lie down prior to the video you have just seen. But this wasn't for a normal roll or snooze. He was actually lying down and then he just stayed down stiff and unnatural, without actually rolling, without anything. And then he let out this huge pain-related groan. Now, I know that this isn't normal and partially I knew to, due to the fact that my stomach literally twisted that moment. So I got him up and I walked him around, which is where the video in the head collar was filmed, whilst we were waiting for the vet. And these signs can be so, so subtle. When the vet arrived, and thoroughly checked him through, he thought him to be in peak physical condition, which he was clearly not. So it's so important that you notice those acute signals before you need to consult a vet. As you can see, sometimes signs of stress, such as his chewing, may also become a sign of pain or even both. But this is not meant to discourage you at all. I actually intend for you to take away that you are the expert for your own horse. This actually is a pretty cool thing if you ask me because this means that nobody's going to be better at working and being with your horse than you, given that you put in the effort and of course the love and the care. I also want you to see that different things are possible if you think about keeping your horse fit and healthy. Maybe we should discuss the way we work our horses for this and the how, so to say. Depending on which discipline you love, your training regime will either vary in order to suit your horse's chosen discipline. If you're an endurance rider, you would likely spend a lot of hours or miles in the saddle, working on your horse's stamina, whilst if you are a dressage rider, you will likely focus on strength training in order to enable your horse to perform slow movements and maintain them over a long period of time. So if we stick with those two examples for now, we have two very different types of work. Of course, both horses can do everything, but I want you to see the difference in the purpose of the exercise for the given disciplines. If I want to keep my horse fit and healthy for endurance, I need to take it out on the trails and make sure that their body is kept supple and flexible as well. However, 
during endurance type work, the focus is not on the strength, but on the stamina. So it's more about forward motion and effective coverage of ground over a set period of time and distance. For a dressage horse, on the other hand, I would focus more on strength and bodybuilding type work. I just think of someone going to the gym versus someone going for a run. Both types of exercise require different types of muscle use. Same goes for the horses. In this next video, you can see my Tennessee walking horse, Sun, and I riding with a sheepskin pad and a bitless bridle. Sun is a gated horse, in case you didn't know this breed. They are literally designed for stamina and ground coverage in a very fast and effective walk, but I could see that doing this type of work only was affecting her body in a negative way. She started to show signs of a sway back and muscle atrophy in the saddle area. She became girth sour and I simply wanted more for her. And seeing as she's always struggled to trot or canter in a way that would actually support her body rather than destroy it, I dove into the art of riding with my gated horse and thankfully she loved it. This is by no means perfect, but I have really focused on getting Sun to use her body in a way that helps her strength, as well as taking her out on hacks in order to keep building on stamina, slowing her down in order to actually carry her weight in balance rather than running after it made a huge difference for her. Sadly, I don't have a video of me and Trot or Canter just now, but I promise to share it with you as soon as I do, because the difference is huge. There is no rush. And it wasn't super complicated. All I did was to try and find an effective mix of strength and stamina in order to best keep Sun fit and healthy physically, but ultimately this also enabled her to stay mentally healthy because she still loves going out on a hack and do a fast walk, but also emotionally healthy because she learned that I'd listen to her whenever she's got something to say. And this, my friend, is huge. Once your horse knows that you will actually listen rather than force or rush your way through something, there is a huge whole new world open to you and it's actually super exciting. Imagine how awesome it would be to not force or train your horse to do something but you actually have a mutual connection, a two-way discussion even if it sometimes ends up in a little bit of an argument because that's the thing about good friendships isn't it? The ability to argue but then to reason with each other in a way that actually suits both whilst both opinions have been heard and appreciated. That, my friend, is what I want for you because keeping your horse fit and healthy is about so, so, so much more than simply doing your rounds in the arena or counting the strides between poles or finding exercises that go well together or only ever going on hacks. It's about all the little subtle details that lie in between you and your horse. And it's about the spaciousness that they actually create, space to evolve together as a team. In this last video, I want to share with you a little insight into loose work with my pony bee. I've mentioned her before. She's kind of a rescue pony and I've told you already that when she first came to me, she was in severe distress. She was neither fit nor healthy and she was struggling mentally, physically and emotionally. As you can see from this video, we are just playing together and we're playing together loosely in my grass arena. She would have had the choice to either run away and eat grass with her friends or anything else really at that given time, but she chose not to. She chooses to hang out with me instead, which to me is the biggest achievement because it means trust and friendship in a way that I never thought possible with this little girl. Be consistently said no to everything that traditional methods of horse training were suggesting that I should do. She reared, she bit, she kicked, and she ran off as soon as she saw anything like my car, the tag, or myself. So I listened to her instead. I followed her suggestions whilst I was throwing in my own ideas as well. At the end, we started having a two-way conversation and just look how far we've come. I really, really hope this is empowering you on your own journey as well. 
I know, of course, that you may have completely different goals with your own horse compared to what I do. Maybe you desire to compete or maybe you are a happy hacker and you have ambitions in classical dressage. Maybe you don't want to ride at all or maybe you seek more knowledge around the therapy and rehabilitation aspects. The world literally is your oyster. So whatever your goals and ambitions may be, they are possible. You have seen from these sequences that I have very, very different horses and very different plans with each and every one of them. They all have their individual strengths and weaknesses, much like I do. And it is my goal to keep all of them fit and healthy individually, whilst not jeopardizing on their mental, physical or emotional well-being. Every horse is unique, so there is no exact blueprint on how to get it right. Get it right, because you and your horse decide what's actually right for you. And that is also the beauty of it. I could probably <laughs> show you so many more things and go on for hours, but I don't want to flood you right now. Instead, I want to offer you an opportunity to dive deeper into this at your own pace. We've literally just scratched the surface and not even very deep. I want your horse to be fit and healthy, but equally, I want you to have a fabulous time with your horse in the meantime. So I have started something really exciting. I have created a membership area where I will host the Science for Soundness Holistic Horsemanship Academy. The Academy is including everything that will help you keep your horses fit and healthy on every level. From equine husbandry to feeding regimes, from groundwork and riding and loose work to equipment saddle fit, training in general, rider mindset, herd behavior, exercise regimes and so much more. I'm super hyped about this as this is going to be the only place where I share everything. There will be a new video for you where we will be focusing on a specific topic every month in your membership area. And I will hold a live session with the entire group of all members each month to discuss the content and your own progress and thoughts on each individual's topic. This gives you the unique opportunity to ask all of your questions and dive really deep into the specific areas of holistic horsemanship. This membership is available to you at a really insanely affordable rate. There will also be a VIP option for you if you desire one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with me, but do bear in mind that these spots are quite limited. These are perfect for you if you desire individual lessons or coaching sessions, either with or without your horse. I'm so excited about this space and I can't wait to share it with you. So if you would like to join us, to keep your horse fit and healthy on all levels, physically, mentally, and emotionally, then you are most welcome to join us in the Holistic Horsemanship Academy. Just click the link below this video to sign up and I really can't wait for you to be in there.